I will restart. Distinguished Ambassador Li Hui, friends from the press, good afternoon. Now, first of all, I wish to apologize first for taking up some of your times. I am Vice President from the China Public Diplomacy Association, Chen Yuming. First, on behalf of the CPDA, I wish to welcome our friends from the press to attend this Lin Jia Seven Salon briefing. In this salon, we will focus on the visit by Ambassador Li Hui, the Special Representative of the Chinese government on Eurasian affairs to the five countries, including Ukraine. Not long ago, Ambassador Li Hui visited Ukraine, Poland, France, Germany, and Russia. And, ex and had extensive ex uh, engagement and exchanges with all parties on the political resolution of the Ukraine crisis, expounded on China's positions and prepositions, listened to the views and suggestions from various parties, and forged in order to forge more international consensus. Parties attach high importance to Ambassador Li Hui's visit and fully recognize China's positive role in promoting talks for peace and appreciate China's call for respecting sovereignty, territorial integrity, and abiding by the purposes and principles of the UN Charter and look forward to China's continue to play a constructive role. The Chinese Representative visit to relevant countries at this time demonstrate again that China is committed to promoting peace talks and fully demonstrate that China stands firmly on the side of peace. To further expound on China's relevant positions and have an objective and in-depth discussion on the importance of this visit, we now have with us Ambassador Li Hui to come as a main speaker today and exchange views with our friends from the press. Now, I'll give the floor first to Ambassador Li Hui for his briefing. Friends from the media, I'm very happy to see you. I heard there have been a lot of briefings here. And this saloon is highly effective and fruitful. This saloon serves as a platform for you to communicate with relevant Chinese officials. Today I've got this opportunity to be here and meet all of you. And today we are going to talk about something a little bit sensitive, and it carries significance. Today I'm here to update you on my European tour. My friends from the media, I believe that you have always kept abreast of the latest developments of major international events. So from May 15th to 28th, so I, as the special representative of the Chinese government on Eurasian affairs, visited Ukraine, Poland, France, Germany, the EU headquarters, and also Russia. There, I had communications with all parties on the political settlement of the Ukraine crisis. So today, I'd like to begin by briefing all of you on my recent visit. 
And then I will take your questions. The main purpose of my tour this time is to exchange views with all parties on a political settlement. Ukraine is my first stop. During my stay in Ukraine, I called on President Zelensky and I held meetings with head of the presidential office, Yermak, and Foreign Minister Kuleba, respectively. In addition, in Kyiv, the responsible officials of the Ministry of Infrastructure, Energy and Defense also held a special briefing for me to update me on the situation in Ukraine. During my stay in Poland, France, Germany and the EU headquarters, I held talks with Under Secretary of State Gerwell in Warsaw, with the DG of Political and Security Affairs Mondoloni in Paris, with State Secretary Michel Alice in Berlin, and Head of Cabinet of President Charles Michel of the European Council, Bechner, and Deputy Secretary General of the EEAS, Mora, in Brussels. My last stop was Russia. When I was in Moscow, I held meetings with Foreign Minister Lavrov and two deputy foreign ministers. One is Budenko, who, was who is responsible for bilateral relations between China and Russia. Another one is Galuzin, who is responsible for the affairs of the Commonwealth of Independent States. So I expounded on China's positions and propositions during my exchanges with all parties, also they shared with me their insights. So our exchanges were in-depth and candid. So it may be fair to say that my visit achieved its intended purpose. At every stop, my delegation was warmly received, so I would like to say a big thank you to all my hosts once again. This is the first time for China to send a delegation to relevant countries for the political settlement of the crisis through diplomatic means. Through my in-depth communication and exchanges with all parties, I've got the following impressions, and now I would like to share them with you. And these impressions are the most obvious ones I've got. The first impression is that all parties spoke positively of China's efforts and wished to resolve the crisis peacefully. Be it Ukraine, Russia, other European countries, or the EU, all of them generally recognize China's 
efforts for peace talks. All of them support a political settlement, and all of them wish China could play its role. All of them are willing to continue communications with China and also among themselves. Ukraine appreciated China for its positive role in promoting peace talks, appreciated China's respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, and observance of the purposes and principles of the UN Charter. The Ukrainian side stressed that many points in the position paper on the political settlement of the Ukraine crisis released by China are consistent with President Zelensky's 10-point peace formula. And Ukraine looked forward to China's continued constructive influence. Russia appreciated China's sincere wishes and results-oriented efforts to push for a political settlement and said that Russia will continue to follow the direction of political settlement. Poland, France, Germany and the EU all expressed their expectation that China will continue to play a positive role on the Ukraine issue, work for a peaceful solution to the crisis, resolve differences through dialogue, and realize durable and just peace in Europe. All these, once again, showed that China's position on Ukraine is objective, fair, and impartial. And China's position has been thought highly of by the international community. This is my first impression. The second the risk of escalation remained high. At present, the conflict is still dragging on and escalating. Now, I stayed in Ukraine for three days. And in Kyiv, air raid sirens were sounded every single day. And there were two massive airstrikes in Kyiv. The conflict is in a stalemate and the battlefield is fraught with uncertainty. This situation is worrying. If history is any guide, we will know that all wars and conflicts ended in a peaceful way. But if the war continues to go on, there will only be more disasters and suffering. As long as there is a glimmer of hope for peace, we should work actively toward it instead of allowing the conflict to continue and spread, still less should we add fuel to the fire, because that will only cause a local conflict to evolve into a large-scale war. To be frank, I feel that as things stand, it may be rather difficult for all parties to sit down for fruitful negotiations. But 
I think it is important that someone take the initiative to build the broadest possible common understandings among all parties so as to gradually accumulate and create conditions for the final settlement of the crisis. And China is ready to do anything conducive to easing tensions and promoting negotiations. This is my second impression. Third, all parties were highly concerned about the crisis, potential spillover to the wider world, especially about nuclear safety, humanitarian issues, and food security. All parties were closely following the safety of nuclear facilities within Ukraine. For example, Ukrainian officials on multiple occasions expressed to me their concern about the safety of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. And officials in Poland also shared this worry. If a nuclear disaster really occurs, no country will emerge unhurt. So all parties need to shoulder their responsibility for ensuring the safety of nuclear facilities and take concrete actions to cool the situation down. I think this is the fundamental way to ensure nuclear safety. During my tour, I've noted that many countries are concerned about the humanitarian issue caused by this crisis. Now China also attaches great importance to humanitarian issues, and China has been playing a constructive role in easing the humanitarian situation in its own way. China supports all initiatives and measures conducive to easing the humanitarian crisis. China proposed a six-point initiative on preventing a massive humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. And China provided multiple batches of humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. And some Chinese provinces are now in differently relations or sister provinces with some states in Ukraine, and these Chinese provinces also provided humanitarian assistance to their sister provinces and states in Ukraine. And at the same time, we believe that promoting early de-escalation by stopping adding fuel to the fire to reduce casualties is the best humanitarian action. During my visit, concerned were also expressed about the impact of the Ukraine crisis on the world food market because food security bears on the survival and well-being of people around the world. Friends from the media, I bet all of you know that Russia and Ukraine are both important grain producers in the world. So the implementation of the Black Sea Grain Initiative is of great significance to ensuring global food security. The Black Sea Grain Initiative implementation means a lot for ensuring global food security. I'd like to reiterate this. 
when I was in Ukraine. When I arrived in Ukraine, the initiative was about to expire in two days. But eventually, when we left Kyiv for Warsaw, this initiative was extended for another two months. China maintains that this initiative should continue to be implemented in a balanced, comprehensive, and effective manner. China has put forward a cooperation initiative on global food security, and China is ready to strengthen communication and cooperation with all other parties in this regard, so as to build more common understandings and contribute to world food security. The Ukraine crisis is more than one year old. This crisis has a complex history and reasons. But essentially, it is an eruption of the problems built up in the security governance of Europe. China did not create the crisis, nor is it a party to the conflict. Rather, China is an advocate of peace and a facilitator of peace talks. China always upholds an objective and just position on the Ukraine issue and has never stopped its efforts to promote peace talks. President Xi proposed four points about what must be done. And this is China's fundamental approach to the political settlement of the crisis. On February 24th, on the one year mark of the conflict, China issued its 12 point position paper. China hopes to work on the basis of this document to strengthen dialogue and exchanges with all parties and continue to expand common understandings for the political settlement. Guided by the aforementioned principles, China has been playing a constructive role in peacefully resolving the crisis and calling for cessation of hostilities. Since the outbreak of the conflict, President Xi Jinping had held meetings or had telephone conversations with leaders of both Russia and Ukraine and multiple other countries and worked on both worked on all sides. This year alone, President Xi visited Russia and hosted in China President Macron and President Lula da Silva. And on April 26th, President Xi had a phone call with President Zelensky. And every time finding a political settlement was high on the agenda. China has provided food, medicine, and many other humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. China's efforts are there for all to see. <coughs> China's position on Ukraine has been consistent and clear. That is promoting peace talks and easing tensions. Promoting peace talks and easing tensions, 
is our consistent and clear-cut uh, position. <coughs> we will continue to follow through on President Xi's proposals of four points about what must be done, four things the, in the international community must do together, and three observations. So these, based on these proposals and observations, China is ready to strengthen dialogue and exchanges with all parties, build mutual trust and broader common understandings and so as to make our contribution to the political settlement of the crisis. That's it for my briefing. And I've visited six countries, including the EU. And what I updated you just now are the main impressions of God during my tour. And for the rest of the session, and in the future, I would like to share more about this for you. Thank you, Ambassador Li. Ambassador just now shared with you how he felt and what he saw during the trip, and I believe that this is quite helpful. Now the floor is open. We would like to take your questions. Thank you, Ambassador Li Hui. Good afternoon uh, from the uh, China Media Group. During your visit, uh, a Wall Street Journal report claimed that according to some officials of Western countries familiar with the situation, China proposed a ceasefire that would leave Russia in possession of parts of Ukraine. But uh, Foreign Minister Kuleba of, of Ukraine said that no country said uh, that the Special Representative uh, Li, you made the remarks reported by the Wall Street Journal. Yes, I also noted a relevant report by the Wall Street Journal, and I also noted Foreign Minister Kuleba's clarification on this issue. On this issue, China's MFA spokesperson has already made clarifications. I have no idea who the so-called official of uh, Western countries familiar with the situation is, which uh, official does that refer to? But the report is not in line with the facts. On the Ukraine crisis, China's stance has been objective and just. We try to promote peace talks, and we have always stood on the side of peace, dialogue, and justice. It is fair to say that everything we do is above the board, no matter who we're talking to, with Ukraine, with Russia, with the EU, our stance has been consistent and clear-cut. After each stop of my visit, we released relevant information in a timely manner. In our visit to the next stop, the officials always quote the readout from my last stop. That means that they follow the whole trip very closely. China's position on the Ukraine crisis has won extensive understanding and support from the international community, including both Russia and Ukraine. For example, during my visit to Ukraine, 
I and my delegation had a friendly and candid discussion with Foreign Minister Kuleba. The Ukraine side appreciates China's positive role for promoting peace and appreciates China's call for respecting sovereignty and territorial integrity and observance of purposes and principles of the UN Charter. Foreign Minister Kuleba made clarifications on the reports you mentioned. This means that relevant Miss report counters the facts and didn't weigh any support. It is a move to sow discord between China and Ukraine. I would like to stress that China is not a party directly in the Ukraine crisis, in the Ukraine issue and we will not inflame the situation. And the Ukraine issue is not a problem between China and Ukraine, between China and Russia, or between China and the EU. China stands ready to further strengthen communications and dialogue and play a constructive role for promoting peace talks. Thank you. According to some experts, uh, your tour in Europe was not intended to rally support, but to bridge the gap between the uh, Chinese and European views on the conflicts. And we have the impression, as a European, that the, the position still remains really far between you, China, and the European leaders. So I was saying, sorry for that, according to some experts, uh, your tour in Europe was, not, was intended to, not to rally support, but to bridge the gap between Chinese and European views on the conflict. We have this impression as Europeans, uh, maybe, uh, the, that the position still remains really far between China and European leaders, some European leaders. Uh, <clears throat> On the differences between China's position and the EU's position, during my visit I also noted some reports on that. Actually, on this issue, China and the EU has many common understandings. For example, in April, during President Macron's visit to China, the joint statement between China and France contains much relevant content, including that both sides support all efforts to restore peace in Ukraine based on international law and purposes and principles of the UN Charter. Both sides stand against armed attack of nuclear power plants and other peaceful nuclear facilities. And both sides support the IAEA to play a constructive role in promoting safety and security of uh, peaceful nuclear facilities. And the two sides also emphasized that conflicting parties need to strictly 
observe the importance of humanitar international humanitarian law. So far, this is the first joint statement that contains such content that we have issued with European countries. China will continue to maintain communications with the all parties, including Europe, to play a constructive role for uh, easing the situation. Phoenix, Phoenix TV. My question is, after this trip, what's your assessment about a political settlement of the Ukraine crisis? A lot of parties are concerned about this. Through our communications with all parties, including Ukraine, we have an acute impression that the crisis can only be solved through dialogue and negotiation. During my visit, another impression of mine is that all parties support political settlement of the crisis. Like what I said just now, maybe now it is rather difficult for all sides to sit down at the negotiating table, but we must never overlook another point, which is there is common understanding, however slight it is. For example, Russia said that Russia has never been opposed to peace talks, and Russia always supports solving problems through political means. And the Ukrainian side also said it values and it longs for peace. So my impression is that neither side has shut the door on peace talks. China believes that if we really want to see an end to peace, save lives, and if we really want to put an end to war to save peace and realize, to save lives and realize peace, it is important for us to stop sending weapons to the battlefield, or the tensions will only spiral up. It is China's consistent belief that no matter how difficult the situation is and how many differences there might be, we need to keep to the overall direction of peaceful negotiations until a ceasefire is realized and peace prevails. Thank you. Another point is that we have seen that Many countries, now especially some African countries, including South Africa and Brazil, have come up with uh, initiatives on a peaceful settlement. And during my stay, I heard that six Euro African countries would send a delegation to Russia and Ukraine. China welcomes all these initiatives. Now, it is important to pull different parties' opinions together and forge the greatest common understanding, accumulate and create conditions for the final settlement. So China would like to do anything conducive to easing tensions and promoting peace talks. Thank you.
I'm from VGTRK. Sorry, I'm going to speak in Russian. China has been reiterating that in order to resolve the Ukraine crisis, they need to know the root cause of the crisis and the background of it. What do you think is the root cause of the crisis? In your meeting with representatives from Europe, you said that uh, what do you mean by saying that uh, we need to defend Europe, uh, the allies from the e U U.S. need to defend their autonomy? We have been saying that the Ukraine crisis has its historical background and its realistic reasons. During our visit to Russia, we and our colleagues in Russia have been discussing this, and we've also been engaging in communication with Ukraine. I think that the reason why Ukraine crisis is developing to the point that it has today has its historical reasons and realistic reasons. There are painful lessons to learn that is worthy of deep reflection of all parties. The Ukraine crisis is essentially a eruption of problems built up in the European security governance. On the Ukraine crisis, China has always decided its own positions based on the true merits of matters. We have always been stood, st stood standing on the side of peace, dialogue, and has been committed to promoting peace talks. China is ready to work with the international community and continue to play a constructive role in the political settlement of the crisis. During my talks with our European colleagues, I said multiple times that we support European countries in looking for ways to address both the symptoms and the root cause of the matter. All parties need to make some in, uh, deep reflections. Thank you. Uh, CMG, please. 李大使您好, 总台记者提问, 呃, 您作为资深外交官曾经多次出访了欧洲和欧亚地区, As experienced diplomat, you've been to many European countries. From your personal understanding, what do you think is different uh, between your visit this time and previous ones? <coughs> As a diplomat, indeed, I have been working, I've been responsible for matters in this area, and have been to Russia, and I've also been to many European countries. So this visit is actually to me a revisit. It has been four years since I last worked in Russia. But compared to previous trips, this time is indeed different. One of the most 
salient impression is that our traveling is not that con convenient. I had not yet to told you how I went to Ukraine. Now, I wish to take this opportunity to uh, relate to you how we went there. Since we do not have direct flight to Ukraine, we, we flew from Beijing to Dubai, and then we flew from Dubai to Warsaw. But then we don't have a, since we don't have a direct train to Kiev from Warsaw, so we took cars to the border. That was 12 o'clock at midnight, and then we took a train to Kiev. So it was nearly 14 hours during on the trip. And for our return trip, we bought the train ticket from Kiev to Warsaw. So that was a direct train. We spent about 18 hours on the train. So the train was quite slow and it, the speed of it was, was comparable to the green carriages in China, which the Chinese people are familiar with. So it was very inconvenient. Since there, there are no direct flights between some European countries and Russia, it was also quite inconvenient. When we were leaving Brussels for Moscow, we had to fly, fly to Istanbul and then to Moscow. Originally from Brussels to Moscow, flight, the flight would take only three hours. But then by transferring, we spend a whole night almost 10 hours to arrive there. So we did not rest well for the entire night. So traveling is indeed inconvenient. I think that is the most salient uh, example that the Ukraine crisis has brought to countries' economic and social lives. And that's just an aspect of the impact on traveling. Ukraine, Russia, and countries in Europe used to have cultural, economic, and social exchanges that are very frequent, but many of them are severed artificially. So the countries that have suffered the most are actually not countries on the other side of the ocean, but Ukraine, Russia, and countries in Europe. So we know that the longer that the crisis drag on, the higher price that Ukraine, Russia, and Europe will have to pay. Emerging from the crisis as early as possible will be conducive for all parties, and that is the goal of our efforts to promote peace talks.
In order to effectively promote promote peace and talks, I think these difficulties that we have suffered is nothing. Ambassador Lee's travel to Europe has been has experienced a long trip, and the road is treacherous, just as the ones leading to the resolution of the crisis. <coughs> now, moving on to the next question. CNN, if I understand it correctly, you have denied the things said in the previous mentioned report, and you said you respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of countries, and Ukraine said that its territorial integrity need to be restored to the condition before 1991, including Crimea. So does China support this position? What would China do to urge Russia to restart the talks? Because we know that nowhere has China Propose has China said that it would want Russia to withdraw from the Ukrainian territory. China also concerns. We noted that uh, uh, tactical nuclear weapons is planned to be transmitted to Belarus. It is now already a started process, a spillover of nuclear safety issues. This is already a consequence. Uh, any response uh, from you, Mr. Ambassador, will it make it more difficult to facilitate peace? These two questions, I would like uh, to briefly answer your question. First of all, and you must have uh, studied the proposals of uh, four points about what must be done proposed by President Xi Jinping. The first point of that, and also the first point of our 12-point position paper, is very clear-cut that we respect the independence, sovereignty, and territorial integrity of all countries. I believe that speaks a lot about our position. As for the situation you mentioned about Russia, I would also like to answer your question uh, briefly. Under the leadership of uh, President Xi Jinping and uh, President Vladimir Putin, China and Russia stick to the principle of uh, non-alliance non-confrontation and not targeting any third party and develop partnership. And uh, we respect each other for win-win results and build a new type of uh, international relations and have made contributions for international peace and stability. And this is witnessed uh, by all countries. And who is the real uh, troublemaker in the world and the real security threat in the world? The global community has a keen understanding on that. Any selfish moves that shift blames to other countries will not only harm the interests of the country and its people, but also harm the interests of the world. The force for justice will not accept that, and this will be left behind by the trend of the times. China advocates for a balanced and just way for addressing 
security concerns and security proposals of relevant parties and promote global strategic balance and stability. And uh, I hope that you will have a keen understanding of that point. And uh, we urge relevant parties to stop make remarks that will exacerbate the situation. I think this also might include the misinformation released by the Wall Street Journal by touting disinformation and confrontation for political selfish gains. This is against moral standards, and this is also very dangerous. As for what you mentioned about Belarus, one thing I would like to say is that um, you might know that uh, in, no, in January last year, the leaders of the five nuclear states issued a joint statement pointing out that a nuclear war is not to be won and not to be fought and that we need to avoid such a war between nuclear states and nuclear weapon states. Under the current situation, all parties need to build consensus for a peaceful resolution of the Ukraine crisis to ease the situation and reduce strategic risks. Just now I talked about how many parties have uh, proposed their propositions on political settlement to the crisis. On all these proposals that are conducive to political settlement of the issue, we commend them. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I have a. Uh, I actually had a two question, but I think my second question has already been answered. So I would like to ask a question. Uh, in his recent interview with the uh, the economy, uh, economist, former State uh, Secretary of Amer America Henry Kissinger, who celebrated his hundredth birthday last week, said that I have not found any Chinese who have a good words to Russian, and uh, neither I have found any Russian who have good words to China. So I was just curious to know from the Chinese point of view what uh, this actually means. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned Mr. Kissinger's comment in an interview we also admire how he is uh, sharing this insight at his uh, 100th birthday and my comment on that can mainly divide it into two points. Uh, first of all, China-Russia relations is based on the principle of non-alliance, non-confrontation, and not targeting a third party. And our two countries have uh, developed partnership, not alliance, have uh, stick to dialogue, not confrontation. And uh, we have developed a new type of major country relations based on mutual respect, peaceful coexistence, and win-win cooperation. China developing a strategic partnership of coordination with Russia delivers benefits to the two peoples and also uh, the world. Compared with some countries actions, clinging to Cold War mentality, ganging up with other countries, create small circles and block confrontation, and carry out hegemonic and bullying actions. These are completely different practices. And my second point 
would be that uh, just now I also talked about this. Now, although for the time being, we still face many difficulties to have all parties to sit down and talk uh, with results. And the important thing now is that uh, someone take the initiative to help build consensus and uh, broadest possible common understandings to create conditions for the final resolution of the crisis step by step. As long as it is a proposal that is conducive uh, for easing the situation and promoting dialogues and negotiation, China stands ready uh, to get involved. China will continue to work with the rest of the international community to play a constructive role for resolving, politically resolving uh, the Ukraine crisis. And uh, we stand ready to work with all parties especially those that have uh, made proposals on promoting peace talks to play a positive role for the political settlement of the issue. Thank you. Thank you. I'm with the CGTN. Uh, I know. Thanks. Uh, during your meeting with the top Ukrainian officials, you were quoted in the media as saying that all parties involved in the conflict need to start from themselves. But as we've seen, no one between Ukraine and Russia wants to budge. So what do you think is the minimum that Ukraine and Russia need to do to initiate the restarting of the peace talks? And also, what can China do further to make the two sides come to the table? Thank you. I'm very happy to take a question. Overall, the Ukraine situation is at a critical juncture. During my communications with both parties, I feel that their positions are vastly different. <coughs> That said, China will continue to follow through on the proposals of President Xi of four points, four things, and three observations, and step up dialogue and communication with all parties to pull common understandings and the broadest common understandings to contribute China's share for the political settlement of the crisis. Like what I said, I led the first Chinese delegation to relevant countries to compare notes and exchange views. So my delegation is not for any quick results or quick delivery. What is more important is to better understand different parties' stance and also elaborate on China's stance and position on promoting peace talks. I believe that through the concerted efforts of all parties, the Ukraine crisis will see a peaceful solution eventually. Thank you. Uh, uh, my question is also about the Wall Street Journal report. 
If I didn't get it wrong, China's position is still that a cease, an early ceasefire should be pursued, right? And during your visit, Mr. Ambassador, so what is China's position on how to deal with the, the temporarily occupied Ukrainian territory? So what's China's position and an implant for interest parties? Another question is that I believe, Ambassador, you must have noted that the Ukrainian side and Europe may hold the view and they express the concern that China may not really act as a real mediator. So what's your response to this, Ambassador? Thank you. I've got your point. You was wondering what will China do going forward? Will China continue to play a mediating role? I think that's the gist of your question. For China's goal is promoting peace talks and cessation of hostilities and the lowering of temperature on the battleground and to seek a peaceful solution. This is the first time for China to engage with other interest parties. Through this visit, China has a better understanding about the basic situation and different parties' standpoint, and we will sum up what we have got, and we will study what we learned during my trip. So in light with the development of the situation and the reaction of the international community, China will continue to, to decide what it will do and what specific measures it will take going forward. China is willing to consider sending another delegation to relevant countries to exchange views on the political settlement of the crisis. China is also willing to stay in communication with all parties. I'd like to quote what my European officials often say. This is the first Chinese delegation, and this will not be the last one. We will continue to follow through on the proposals of four points about what must be done proposed by President Xi, as well as the Chinese government 12-point position paper to continue to play a positive role in seeking an early peaceful solution. In the interest of time, this session is drawing to a close. So one last question. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador, for, for your time. Um, because you have a, a very um, deep uh, uh, knowledge and understanding of um, Russia, because you spent more than 10 years of your life and uh, your career in Moscow, uh, do you have an idea about this um, uh, special uh, military operation? Why did Russia decide to do it? Thank you. <coughs> the question you mentioned as for why Russia took such actions. 
I would like to share with you two points. First of all, just like what I have uh, mentioned, the Ukraine issue has a complex history and uh, reasons and factors. In Europe, I exchanged views with uh, European colleagues on how we should reflect the root cause of the Ukraine crisis. And I believe that um, everyone will ponder over that issue and have their own conclusion. And one thing I would like to add is that no matter what the root cause is, what the, what the root cause causes are, and the most important thing we need to do now is to come to the negotiating table to realize, to restore peace in Ukraine through political settlement. This is a trend that serves the interests of all parties. And you also asked about um, why Russia took such actions. I relay to you what I heard from the Russian side. The Russian colleagues and Russian media that this special military action is to protect the safety of uh, residents in Donbas. And uh, this is what I was told by Russian colleagues. Uh, and, uh, thank you. And today we have uh, received uh, multiple questions on Ambassador Li Hui's visit. Currently, the Ukraine crisis is, is still developing and escalating. Its spillover effects is still showing, and the international communities call for ceasing fire and easing the tension is louder. China is ready to play a constructive role and forge more international consensus for ceasing fire and starting peace talks and avoiding the escalation and contribute more to the political settlement of the crisis. I know that today's topic is of great interest to all of you, and many friends from the press would like to ask more questions, but in the interest of time, we will have to end here. But I appreciate your interest, but also it's a pity that we're not able to give more opportunities. But the Linjia 7 Shalom will have more activities of various kinds in the future and provide a good platform for our friends from the press to know more about China and share your views. So please stay tuned and we welcome your active participation. Now, with your consent, today's we will wrap up today's session. Thank you for your coming. Thank you.